Hey everybody, and welcome back to Creator Spotlight. I am joined today by Captain Punch once again, and we are going to be interviewing Hayden. Hayden, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, uh, my name's uh, Hayden, or Hayden EST 1999, if you find me on Xbox. Uh, yeah, I'm, I love Forge. What, am I, what else can I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always great to hear, as I'm pretty sure we all do. <laughs> uh, but yeah. to, get, to get right on into this, how long have uh, you been in the community for, Hayden? Yeah, well, uh, I started way back when in Halo 3. Um, honestly didn't really do much it was much more of a this cool new thing is here let me make a weird playground for all of my friends to mess about in <laughs> and then fast forward to halo 4 i made a couple race tracks i'm sure duquesne will be proud uh and then in into went into halo 5 and i think all right now 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 i'm starting to get interested in this thing i want i want to learn the ins and outs and so i did i sat down one day and just decided okay what does this piece do? How can I use it? Is there a way I can mess with the properties? So on and so forth. Eventually that led into me learning how to use the scripting engine, as balked as it is in Halo 5. I'm entirely self-taught in that as well. And uh, yeah, I just I love forging uh, amazing stuff. I love pushing specifically Halo 5 to the limits. Like, it's specific, with my map, uh, was it Dawn of the Banshee as well? Right. Anyway, I'll offer it up. <laughs> you, know what, you can carry on with the interview. <laughs> no, you're good, Ben, you're good. It's always great to go on tangents, trust me. Uh, it's one of the great things about this interview is we're able to talk more and show more as well, <laughs> if that makes any sense. No. Um, yeah. But uh, you mentioned the scripting stuff. Um, I know you and Punch are both in the scripting guild. Uh, Punch, uh, how long has Hayden been a part of the guild? Uh, that actually, I am not 100% sure myself when I did. Hayden joined. Uh, <laughs> I know. Been a friend for a while. Uh, yeah. Um, probably joined actually during one of the times that I was on hiatus. Yeah, nice. yeah I joined, yeah, I joined, what was it, uh, about a year before uh, Infinite came out in terms, well, maybe two. Oh, yeah. Oh, my so... word. No, I've lost like a year because of the thing that shall not be known. Yeah, right. I joined about like three years ago. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I joined the actual Scriptus Guild about three years ago. Started just asking random questions whilst actually developing in Dawn of the Banshee. And I think it was uh, Yimadeus Big Butt, who we all shall bow down to, our Lord and Savior. Yimadeus recognized me as someone that is, knows what they're talking about. And if you ever feel like you have a question, feel free to ping me, because I will yeah. gladly answer any questions. Uh, when it comes to Forge, um, what are you typically inspired by when you're making anything, whether it be through scripting, aesthetic, or anything like that? I know you said um, you forge with someone else as well. Um, who do you... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, me and my uh, Forge partner, uh, TomTom24. We're, we're good mates. We've known each other since the beginning of time. And... Uh, Every now and then when we're in a party, just like having a chill night with friends, one of us will say something dumb, like, what if this? And then I'll sit there for a good five minutes thinking, hang on a minute, no, I can do that. that that's a thing that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so the next day or two, we'll jump in a forge lobby. I'll sit down and work on the scripts. Tom starts working on the... Uh, like an actual layout of a map, and then we'll build something together. That's that's how on the majority of our projects come together. One of us has a dumb idea, uh, and then we think, yeah, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> and then we spend the next six months struggling with it. But the results are usually, I say, tooting my own horn, quite good. <laughs> nice, nice. When it comes to those ideas, are you guys typically inspired from like any of your favorite movies or TV shows, or do you guys just go off the wall I, I mean, it can come from anywhere uh, I think we've done a couple of movie inspired ones we did sets from like different machinimas we've oh, we made reach ball for crying out loud uh, and the other one Dawn of the Banshee as well I'm sure anyone in the forge community knows about Night of the Mantis well this was supposed to be like a, a spiritual successor to it now I don't know Julianos personally but he I'm sure he's a great guy and the man is a genius when it comes to scripting all I know is, I understand his pain. <laughs> Having built one of the Banshee from scratch, that thing is is complicated, but it's so beautiful. 
sounds like quite the uh, quite the achievement then in scripting for I mean both you guys back with the uh, Night of the Mantis back when I, I forget the guy's name that you said um, Julianos. yeah Julianos um, it sounds like quite the achievement for him and then also it sounds like quite the achievement for you for you for somewhat reverse engineering it seemingly it sounds like uh, yeah I, I built mine from scratch and like I like say I know I I well I say I toot my own horn and say that I'm good I'm just here. I, I'm just happy to help. The real, the real pros are the ones that can actually build maps with good detail and map flow. Th those are the real MVPs. Um, so what I was going to ask, uh, some of these projects, the the Daughter of the Banshee, the the, the vo beach volleyball, um, some of the Machinima sets. Um, if you could, you know, maybe like pick one of them and and not necessarily describe the. Uh, process you went through while making it but give a, a an overview of like what is actually happening and what what the project is because you know we say dawn of the banshee and i mean people you know people know night of the mantis that played that in action sack yeah. and the places that it showed up but not everybody has been exposed to that so if you could maybe describe what dawn of the banshee actually is what the experience is and you know any what you know maybe a technical technical hurdle that you had when you were trying to make some some aspect of it uh come to come to reality yeah absolutely um so the thing with dawn of the banshee is it's it's very much a uh, a linear experience but it's one that can be replayed over and over again and the main point of doing that was i wanted from the get-go to have multiple difficulties baked in to the one map so instead of having to choose which difficulty you want ahead of time you just load up the map and away you go that's the first thing that happens in Dolder Banshee is that you show up inside like a an options room and they've got different options so you can choose to either have waves happen automatically with no downtime in between for a bit more of a rushed feeling uh, or you can choose to have like bonus points at game start or uh, the ammo refill costs a certain amount of money and you can choose to have it cost less so it's like options built into the actual mini game itself prior to you actually like starting anything so you don't have to make a decision ahead of time you just pick what you want and go so and anyway once you load into Dawn of the Banshee you'll find yourself in the back of some sci-fi ship like a like the back of a frigate something similar like that and uh, constant waves of banshees ever increasing and randomized in both direction and difficulty of banshee to destroy fly towards you and you have to sit there and defend the base if you one of the banshees get close enough i.e within firing range in quotation marks they fire a banshee bomb that does damage to uh, something on the ship and you have to go and repair it now if something gets damaged you take a you've got a health bar as well that's the other thing which i'm sure will be showcased uh, if you take damage at any point you lose one bar of health if you then uh, repair something you get half a bar of health back so it's always a constant fight to make sure that you don't take damage. And then there's an armory where you use points which you get from blowing up banshees to buy better guns so that you can blow up more banshees. It's it's like Call of Duty Zombies, but you're based in one place fighting against waves and waves and waves of hordes of different banshees flying to trying to attack you. It I want there is an Easter egg on this map as well. That's probably the more complicated thing. It's a very contrived Easter egg, and I will send a virtual high five to the first person to find it <laughs> <laughs> how's uh how a lot of that come to fruition like you said some of it was a little bit uh uh difficult to script so how uh, how what what uh scripting challenges did you have or, uh... okay yeah so i think one of the weird scripting bugs that i encountered was actually one of the oldest and most unique bugs in the entirety of halo 5 I think it's only ever, it's been documented, I believe, by uh, Yumadias again, uh, and I rediscovered it whilst making this. So there's a scoreboard that keeps track of what wave you're on uh, that's in the main lobby, uh, and it rotates every time like a new round starts. So it goes one, two, three, four. It just counts up, right? And it uses the decal piece to do that. It just moves them in and out of the screen. Now, it turns out that in Halo Five. You can't move a decal piece remotely. So say if you've got a script brain and you put on the script brain to move this certain object, 
X amount of units, it'll do it. But it won't do it with decals, specifically. It's a bug or something that was just left out when they designed Halo 5. Uh, there is a way around it, though. And the way around it is to have the thing that moves the decal actually on the decal unit itself. And that took me about four days of banging my head against my desk to figure that out. <laughs> but the people in the guild were the ones that helped me figure it out. That threw me towards the wiki, read up that. It was worded a little bit different at the time, and I helped correct it, but it's... <laughs> That was a big hurdle for me trying to do that. It, it, like I say, it makes no difference to the actual end game product, but it was a good four days of <laughs> what's going on and how do I fix this? Sounds like a, a, f a fun conundrum. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a headache. <laughs> And that's one of the reasons why, you know, having having a community of people that are working on projects and talking about them together, like, you can find those things faster. When someone says, you know, I can't seem to use this script with these objects, three and, and three other people say it, and it's like, oh, wait, so maybe that's not a problem with everything, that's a problem with just these things, or hey, wait, this works this time. Or, oh, it worked when I did it because someone didn't assume that it wouldn't work and they tried it and it did in some weird con con convoluted way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I accidentally fixed something at work uh, in IT just by hitting a different key at boot up because I didn't realize that it was like I just I missed <laughs> and I realized, oh, wait, that's the wrong key. And no, no, it wasn't actually. Uh, it was the right key and I would have found that out in like 10 minutes of looking things up. Uh, but. I found it by accident and then confirmed it in 10 minutes of looking things up. Yep. You know, it's, 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 yeah, we, the, the community definitely, um, helps push that, uh, push that needle to, we know more, understand more and have to bang our heads against the wall less. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, and like I said, the ability to just go into places like the Scriptus Guild, like Forge Hub and tag the people that know what they're talking about. Again, I really don't want to do my own hard, but if you need questions, or like if you have questions rather, and you need advice, tag me in the Scriptors Guild. I will gladly help anyone if I have the time. What's crazy is actually uh, Programmer163, or Guardian163, the guy we interviewed uh, last time, actually said the same thing. So it's nice to see yeah. that a lot of people are very open to helping uh, people out that are having struggles both in the Scriptors Guild and in. I mean, here on Forge, I will do the same thing. Um, not to the same extent as the Scripters Guild, of course, with scripting. Uh, you guys are absolutely killing it with that. But uh, we're a little weird. <laughs> it, oh yeah, it, it's, crazy. It, it, <laughs> it's it's always nice to go in there and like I like to, I, I I chime every every now and again or like just like lurk in, kind of see what people are doing uh, on a lot of different discords for both Forge, Halo in general, and even like the Scripters Guild. I chime in on and. Uh, or lurk in on, I guess is a better way to put that. And like, it's crazy to see how much stuff is still being like looked at in there and still being uh, helped out and all that, even now in what most people would consider the uh, off season of Forge. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. This is, it, the, more, the way I look at it is the more people we can bring up with us, the better community we can have in the future. And that's, that's yep. one of the things I love about the Halo community is that Yes, there are a few bad apples, but it is drowned out completely by the overwhelming wholesomeness of the rest of us. 100%. And I, I'll definitely say something that I um, have been pondering on a lot recently, to some extent, is how like fragmented the community has kind of become in some ways. Like, the competitive community hates the casual community, the casual community hates the competitive community, and then there's the forage community, which is like a middle ground between the two, and like... We've all slowly stopped like pushing each other up, but like if you look towards the Scripters Guild and other Forge Discords and like other places in general, like you'll see that people are still pushing each other up and it's one of those things where honestly, even though we're in kind of a content drought right now when it comes to content for the game, this is kind of one of those moments where it's like MCC was when it was very broken and we needed more content to suffice uh, the wait between MCC and 5 to yeah, where na right. now is the time to where most of us need to keep propping each other up, keep propping the community up, keep uh, creating more content and 
like get everybody through the the wait for Forge for Infinite or the wait for more content in general. Like it's one of those things where now is the time more than ever, just like MCC was to kind of prop each other up. Yeah, like I think I tweeted about this a while ago. It's that devs are humans too. Have some patience. All will be fine. One hundred percent. That that's it. <laughs> a lot. A lot of people. A lot. A lot of people have been kind of vitriolic recently, which is uh, which is semi understandable. Uh, but you know, you shouldn't be sending death threats or be no. going to every single dev's like post or tweet or anything and like ca calling them out or anything like. That's not something to do. Like, you don't have that happen to you for your job. I get it's kind of a different story with game development, but even so, it's common, common cur cur yeah, common courtesy. <laughs> so much sense. Like I said, just a little bit of faith, a little bit of patience. Things are coming. Good things are coming. We just need to wait. <laughs> yep. That is all. Uh, speaking of things that are coming soon and all that, and Infinite, I guess, what are some things that you would like to see in Infinite, whether it be scripting-based or object-based or feature-based, etc.? So, yeah, things I'm looking forward to in Infinite. Well, there, there is a very long list, but if I could nail it down to just one thing, I think it would be a robust, well-put-together, and easily accessible scripting system. Something that allows us to have complete granular control of the current game state. That would be an absolute pipe dream. The amount of things that us forgers and scripters could do, like we, we could be we could be making other games inside of Halo if we have a good robust scripting system. And that, that, I can't wait for something like that, or at least I hope we have something like that. I'm, I'm sure that definitely is gonna be where they go in a lot of ways. I mean, Halo 5 was kind of a incremental increase from MCC scripting, so I think it's definitely, in in the cards at least, have another incremental increase to the scripting system. I sure hope so. Well, on top of that, I guess, let's ask, what is one of your favorite things that you've scripted? My favorite thing? Oh, that's a tough question. Uh, hmm, okay, I think it might be as dumb and as simple as my easter egg that I leave on every single one of my maps. This is not the easter egg I mentioned before, by the way. So, on every single map I have, I leave a little statue of a pineapple wearing sunglasses. His name is Pineapple Dave, and I'm sure you'll be able to find him if you go and play my maps. And if you shoot him, he makes a grunt birthday sound effect. It is so simple, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> So that sounds like a, a nice scripting thing, a nice little scripted easter egg. If you, so you said you put that on all your maps? Yeah, Pineapple Dave is hidden on every single one of my maps. And even a few that aren't mine, but ones that I've helped out on. If I can, I just drop him in as a little surprise. It's like, I was here. <laughs> nice, nice. You can just... uh, would there be anything else that you'd want new forgers to know for whether it be them starting uh, their maps or anything like that you, your first I like the uh, program I said last week so your first map will probably not be great but if you keep at it and you keep learning from your shortcomings eventually you'll become a forging god or goddess <laughs> just takes time and a bit of patience and eventually we will all be amazing and again don't be afraid to ask for help it's the worst thing you can do is not ask for help <laughs> plenty of people that will happily bring you up with them um, well, gentlemen, uh, let's close out here. Uh, Punch, thank you so much for joining me here on this Spotlight interview. Uh, same thing with you, Hayden. Uh, would there be anything that you'd like to say before uh, we let you go? You say thanks for having me. Let's forge a new Halo. Damn it, you stole, you stole the phrase. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're good. Duquesne will be happy that we're using that phrase. Uh, <laughs> Or, or slogan. <laughs> well, everybody, uh, thank you for joining us today on Trader Spotlight. Um, we will be having another interview next month as well. Um, this is our new monthly series, of course, where any of you can be a part of this. So we hope to see you next time on Trader Spotlight. And thank you for joining us today. Hope you guys enjoyed today. And uh, like Hayden said, let's uh, forge a new Halo.